Midnight Stories for Rebel Girls. Hi Rebels, this is Good Night Stories for Rebel Girls, the interview. I'm your host, Alea, and today we're talking to Merritt Moore. She's a dancer and a scientist. She also read us the story of robotics pioneer, Yoki Matsuoka. If you haven't heard that episode, you definitely should. Okay, Merritt, can you introduce yourself to our listeners? My name is Dr. Merritt Moore, and I am a quantum physicist and a professional ballet dancer. I pursued physics and ballet for a long time separately, but now I love merging the two fields, so I now dance with robots. Wow, what a cool combination. So how did you get into both dancing and science? So as a kid, I always loved puzzles and math. Like I just love solving puzzles and building these 3D puzzles in particular. I actually didn't fall into dance until I was 13. And that was late in the dance world. When I started, I was told that I would never make it as a professional ballet dancer, but I loved it so much. I think I gravitated towards it because it was also a nonverbal activity. I gravitated toward things that were nonverbal. So gravitated towards dance, gravitated towards math, and then found physics a bit later when I was around 17. and was like, wow, there are so many mysteries in this universe and I want to discover all of them. Or I want to be part of the teams that are like trying to explore these mysteries in the universe. That makes it sound super exciting. But do you ever find it difficult to balance your art side and your science side? Yes, <laughs> a lot. And a lot of people will tell you to choose just one or the other. And so that was always a struggle because there were a lot of doubts while I was pursuing both. Being like, am I going to make it in just dance? Am I going to make it in physics? And is by pursuing two things, decreasing my chances of making it in either. So that was extremely difficult. It took a lot of hours, a lot of dedicated work, years of hard work, not knowing if it was going to work out. And so I'd have to find out ways in my head. I was like, look, even if I don't make it, how am I going to find value in each hour and find happiness in each hour that I'm doing? And so at the end, even if it doesn't work out, I know I've lived an incredibly happy life and had a blast along the way. And it helped me keep on going because there are many times if it was just for the outcome, I would have quit early. That sounds sort of like the story of Yoki Matsuoka, who you narrated. She also led a sort of double life. Reading her story like resonated so much with me. I especially felt a double life where I would be pursuing physics and I wouldn't tell them that I danced so much. And in the dance world, I also covered up that I studied physics. So I was constantly jumping back and forth until just a few years ago, towards the end of my PhD, I've been pursuing both for 10 years, hiding from the physics world I was pursuing dance, hiding from the dance world I was pursuing physics. And at some point I was just like, why not both? Why am I trying to hide? Like I've now proven that I've done this for 10 years, you know, physics at Harvard and Oxford and now danced in four different ballet companies around the world. You know, why not both? Why am I trying to hide? And at that point I was like, you know what? I'm not going to hide anymore. I think as Yoki had that, realization in her story. She's like, no, there's no more hiding. Like, this is who I am. This is what makes me the best version of myself. And it just felt so free when I reached that realization. You're so lucky you were able to find that freedom and be your whole self. Now that you've found success in both dance and science, what are your goals? I really want to advance the arts. I think technology can really enhance human creativity and also to enhance the research and science and engineering. I think the arts has a huge role in inspiring creative new solutions and breakthroughs in science. And then ultimately, my dream is to go to the moon. So part of learning the robots and the engineering and the AI and having like a playful time with it is so that I have that expertise so that later, you know, I can apply for NASA and say, look, I've 
got the physics background, I'm physically fit. And now, you know, I think robots is the future in space exploration. Can I go? <laughs> wow, imagine dancing ballet on the moon. Okay, if you could go back to when you were a kid and give yourself a piece of advice, what would it be? I would say, give yourself time. Like there is so much pressure and it looks like people get things immediately. A lot of things take years and years and years. And if you're passionate about it and you love it a lot, you will invest the hours and putting in those hours will make you good at the end. If I'd never given myself that time, those hours, those years of patience and persistence and resilience, like I never would have gotten to this level. And, I, and so I think there's so much pressure these days to be immediately good and to have instant results. And that's so not true. So take your time, learn it your own way and, you know, find your own path. That is some really great advice for all of us. Finally, what makes you a rebel girl? I think it's that stubbornness. Because I think also what I'd like to emphasize to the kids is like to be a rebel girl doesn't mean you have to like fight every day, right? I think to be a rebel girl, you can have fun and it's it's not necessarily a fight. So it's really just enjoying and being passionate and finding your own unique way of doing things is most important. Well, it's been a lot of fun talking to you. Thank you, Merit. And thank you for listening. If you like the show, leave a review on Apple Podcasts or wherever you listen and share it with all of your friends. Catch you next time. Stay Rebel.